So how did you actually become an entrepreneur? Like, how did you go from journalist to entrepreneur? Yeah, that's a story because I, I think after seven years of writing for the newspaper, I decided that I wanted to have a little bit more, um, yeah, it's a little bit more exciting stuff in my life. So I started traveling and I went to Dubai. I lived in Bali. I stayed in Japan for a while. So I did the whole digital nomad thing. And then, although it seems really nice on social media, I just got bored by not having a house and I feel a little bit ungrounded and I really wanted to have my roots somewhere. So I came back to Amsterdam and um, I decided that I really wanted my life to change. At that time, I was making around eight or 9,000 a month as a journalist, but I realized that that would never bring me to being a millionaire or, you know, having the amount of money that I easily can live in one of the big houses um, that I saw at the canal. So I started to envision my life in a completely different way. And I thought, okay, so I have to change everything about myself that so far hasn't really been working or is not working towards the goal of becoming a millionaire. Mm -hmm. And I discovered Tony Robbins. I'm a huge fan of Tony Robbins. I listened to him to his videos almost two or three hours a day. And I started doing everything different. And one of the things I did is I rented a really big house on the canals of Amsterdam. And the normal rent in Amsterdam is approximately $1,000 a month. It, it went up a little bit in the past years. But at that time, it would be a lot of money if you would pay $1,500 a month. And I went to a brokerage and I, or what is it? Not a brokerage, a realtor. And I asked to um, go see houses that were all around three or $5,000 a month in rent. I couldn't pay for that, but I didn't tell them that. And they started showing me houses and I picked out a house on the canals of Amsterdam. It was gorgeous, really high ceilings and beautiful view of the canal. And I told the realtor at the time, like, okay, so I'm a really important businesswoman. I have my partner in America. It was all bullshit. And I showed her a website that I really quickly made myself. And I'm like, here, this is what I do. I um, I rent beautiful venues and I rent mm-hmm. them out to businesses to have meetings in them. So meeting mm-hmm. venues. And it works really successfully in New York and it works really successfully in S- San Francisco. And me and my business partner want to start one right now in Amsterdam. And she was like, oh, yeah, okay, I can, you know, propose to the owner if, if that's possible with this venue. It was, the owner was like, okay with it. So we went through and we did all the paperwork. And then that one moment came that she was like, okay, now I need to see your financial, you know, your number. So we are sure that you can actually pay the rent. Mm -hmm. And at that time I didn't have anything, of course. And I was like, okay, or I can now make up numbers. And I wasn't sure if that was illegal and I could Mm -hmm. go to jail (laughs) or I'm just going to be, you know, coming clean. I'm like, okay, you you know what, guys, I actually don't have a business partner in America. I just really (laughs) want to start a business. (laughs) And I did the last thing and the owner was surprised because like, you know what, it's okay. If you think you can and I, I paid six months rent um uh you know in one time and he's yeah. like okay you you can have a chance you can rent it for me and I was third no I was 29 at that time and it was for, for the first time that I had such a big venue and it was such a big thing and I remember standing in the living room crying out of joy because I was like oh my god I really got the chance now to you know start making a business and then I had to think of how I'm gonna literally make it a business. I decided to max out my credit cards. At that time, I didn't Mm -hmm. have so much money. I bought all the things that I thought you would need for a meeting venue. So I bought couches, whiteboards, uh, chairs, cups, everything to set it up for being a meeting venue. And on LinkedIn, I posted a couple of posts like, hey, you guys, I've got this whole new meeting venue. It's It looks like a living room. And it looks like a living room because it basically was my living room. I I was living in there. And that was the start of how I rented out my own house as a meeting venue. And I think within two weeks, I was booked 90%. I, wow. um, as a journalist, I, of course, know how to reach the media. So I contacted the media with like, hey, this is a really different and, and new kind of business. And um, I'm new in Amsterdam. You should come over. So I went on television. Um, and yeah, I got really big clients like Apple.com, Booking.com. Uh, Microsoft, the the government even, like even the mayor of Amsterdam started renting my venues. And within one year, I expanded to four venues. 
and a team of 15 people. And that was my first year as an entrepreneur. And then I realized, hey, I'm actually quite good in being an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know how, how this works. I know how to do marketing. I love building a business. And then I started giving tips to un other entrepreneurs. And I was documenting my whole journey throughout that year, um, vlogging on Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. And I've got so many questions of people like, hey, how, how do you do this? Or how, how is it possible you're in the media? Or how do you manage a whole team of 15 people? And because I was giving so many tips out there, all of a sudden I was like, hey, you know what? I can actually, I grew a following of 10,000 people at the time. I can actually sell them my tips so I can... Um, mm -hmm give them my tips and, and ask, ask money for it. And that's when I created a second company and that is the company I still have. Mm -hmm. And that is my online company where I, I sell courses. And I think as soon as I created my first course and I put it on Instagram, I was like, Hey, you guys, you can now buy my course. I only made it $15 at the time. And I immediately in one afternoon made $8,000. I realized, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get rid of my old business because an online business is so much more profitable. It's so much more interesting. It is, you make uh, something one time and you can sell it a thousand times. This is the kind of business and the kind of energy I wanna be in. And from that moment on, I focused, um, yeah, most of, on my online business. I grew that company for, you know, in the past years, I made $5 million selling online courses. And I stopped mm -hmm. my meeting venue company two years ago, something like that. Yeah, in COVID. Ah, you stopped it. So you didn't sell it, you stopped it. I stopped it. It was, I think in hindsight, I might have tried to sell it at least, but I didn't deem it a really sellable company. One, mm. I stopped it during COVID and the COVID rules were just out there. So meetings were literally prohibited in the Netherlands. You couldn't mm, meet up yeah. with more than two people. So I was like, well, good luck selling a meeting venue company right now. Mm. Second thing, I couldn't get, I didn't want to get bothered with, I, I had, I think, two conversations with potential uh, buyers. I reckoned that I could earn maybe hundred or maybe $200,000 from selling mm. it. At the same time, I was making $200,000 with just selling, you know, one launch of one of my courses. My last launch mm. that I did was $1.7 million in one week. So I'm like, the potential, if I just mm. focus my energy on my new company, instead of trying to sell the old company, I thought that my energy was, was wiser spent in my new company. That's very impressive. Most people... I mean, I know a lot of people in the online course industry and most people don't ever, within years, ever, ever get to this kind of, these kinds of numbers. So we're, that was in Dutch language, right? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. So Thank you. that's very impressive. So obviously you knew how to get followers, how to market yourself. And how long is that ago? Uh, I started four years ago. Four now, I was ago. really, really shy. Um, as a journalist, I was used to always be the person, you know, behind my pen and paper, right? I would never yeah. be on camera. And I think just the desire when I started that company with meeting venues, just the desire to sell the meeting venues. I was like, okay, I need to go on Instagram right now. I need to promote my meeting venues. Mm. And that's also when I thought, okay, the best way to promote stuff, and it, I still believe that, and you mentioned that in the beginning of our conversation, is when people trust you and when you're a likable personal brand, when people are engaged in your story and your journey in life, they're probably gonna buy all your stuff because, you know, they feel like they know you, you're their friend. So me promoting my business wasn't like I see a lot of people do like, oh, hey, hire my meeting venue. Like that is a really, I would say almost cold sales. You try to mm. get people interested in something that they're not really interested in. But when I was taking them on my journey of, hey, I'm trying to fill up my meeting venues and I'm a bit nervous because I've got a cl client coming and I'm now, you know, getting... Mm. Uh, fresh flowers for the room and here i'm gonna go to the bakery and get some nice um uh, stuff to mm. to to give then people are still you know remembering that you have fresh 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 flowers and that mm. you have those nice bakery stuff 
Um, but they don't perceive it as sales that much. So mm. that's what I always teach now. And one of my courses is about how to vlog on Instagram and how to, you know, make stories and stuff like that. Document your life instead of selling your life. And it's mm -hmm. by documenting, you're selling it um, actually at the same time. I see. So how would you approach, like if someone wants to start like an online business, selling online courses and stuff like that, what would be your marketing approach? Okay. You would like, let's say document your daily life, basically. Well, usually Which when channels do you use? Yeah, I think Instagram is is great. Um, TikTok is amazing. Those mm. those two platforms right now will have you know you, you have the biggest chance of getting a lot of uh, eyes on your mm -hmm. content if you go viral. Um, it's a little bit harder with YouTube if you don't have a direct uh, you know if if you're not really well known yet. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the time when you want to create an online course, you have to have some knowledge or some journey or interested in the subject you want to have an online course about, right? So for instance, let's say that you want to give an online course about for, for women, how your hormones work in your body, something like that. Yeah. The best way to start selling a course about that is first take people with you in your own life. For instance, oh, here I'm drinking my coffee. I'm actually not drinking with caffeine because that will, you know, mix up my hormones. So I'm drinking decaf. Next, mm -hmm. uh, next story is about, oh, I always make sure that I eat this, you know, supplement because it's really good for this or that. So you're educating them, but not in a really annoying way. You're just showing them how you live your life so mm -hmm. that people who feel like, oh, I want actually, I want to have that life that she has. She doesn't have acne or she doesn't, I don't know, she, she isn't not in menopause yet. So I want to do whatever she is doing. And because mm -hmm. they feel that they like you and they know you, they're more interested in buying your course. One of my, my courses is about obviously how to create a course and how to sell your course. Mm -hmm. You have to start small. And I think the one thing that people already have to understand when they start is that every platform has its own style, its own kind of way of, you know, almost its own language even. If you go on TikTok, they, you know, there are these, these viral videos who all have the same jokes or all have the same kind of rhythm in the videos. Mm. So there's a huge part of when you want to start on social media and you have no idea where to start is first like listen. And by listening, it's literally viewing, of course, with social media. Mm. So when I start to understand the platform and it's the same with Instagram, I started to set an alarm and spend two hours a day just browsing through Instagram, just seeing what kind of people are doing a little bit the same as what I'm going to do. Mm. How do they do it? What are the different styles there are there? Because the algorithm also, when you, you know, for instance, when you like the, the, the weapons, um, egg eating mm. guy, <laughs> you probably see a lot of people doing those kind of things because the al algorithm noticed, Hey, he likes that. So I'm going to show yeah. him more. But if you're mm -hmm. a 13-year-old girl and you're on the platform and you love dancing videos, you only see dancing videos. So you have to train yourself and the algorithm to not be scared of the things you see and like, oh, God, mm -hmm. I need to, you know, dance with weapons right now. No, you just have to type in names of people you'll find interesting and see what they are doing and trying to teach the algorithm what it is that you want to see when you open the app. So I would say two hours of learning, just listening, watching, mm -hmm. viewing. And then the second thing you need to learn is how to find your own voice. And most people are so scared and so disappointed by their own voice on social media because, and I'm not talking about your actually voice, but I'm talking about the way that you present yourself. And they're like, oh, it doesn't feel like me. It feels, you know, it feels so fake or it feels so weird or like a wannabe. And I always tell them, this is your online persona. She's just born. So she has no idea yet how to grow into the persona you're going to be in a year, but you just have to give her time and experiment. So mm. for some people I say, okay, start, try to start make stories that are more educational. So give a tip here and there, try to make more stories that you do something fun, try to make a joke on Instagram. So try to mm find your voice by experimenting a lot and that is most of the time done by just copying what you see and what you find funny or what you find inspirational of other people 
And then after, I want to say eight weeks, you're probably going to be dialing in your own tone of voice and your own style on social media. And that's when it starts getting good. But those first eight weeks are going to be awkward. I see. It, it, isn't it really hard to gain followers nowadays? This is also like you have to know something about the algorithm. Do you study the algorithm and do you figure out like... Well, nobody oh, really it, knows the algorithm so well, right? Like some mm -hmm. people blow up with one video and um, they make several accounts and then the one account blows up and the other account with exactly the same video doesn't blow up. So it's mm. the algorithm isn't really clear. So I just don't really mind the algorithm. I feel, and that's my philosophy as an entrepreneur anyway, it's all about skills. It's about mm -hmm. developing skills. And if you're too busy trying to control things that are, are out of con your control, like the algorithm, you end up being worried all the time. Well, if you focus on your own skills, those are in your control. Like, how do I speak on camera? How do mm -hmm. I smile on camera? How do I articulate a point a little bit better? How can I, you know, embrace storytelling in my, in my vlogs? Those are the things you can do. And the more you improve that and the more you work on that the better when the algorithm is in your favor the quicker you will grow there is this contradicting no there's this belief and i i'm not really subscribing to it and that is that if you want to start your business you have to find your biggest passion to do yeah. so and if you haven't found your passion you haven't found a golden idea to make money then you just have to keep searching for that golden idea One of my biggest tips for people who want to be an entrepreneur is start any business. Even mm. if you're selling phone covers, even if you're going door to door and trying to sell, I don't know, Bibles, start something that teaches you the skills as an entrepreneur. Tell yourself, this is just for a year. I'm just trying to understand how entrepreneurship works. I'm trying to build my own website. I'm trying to market myself by social media. I'm trying to learn how to deal with rejection. Like there are so many things as an entrepreneur that you have to learn so many skills and you can learn that with any business. And instead mm. of trying to start a business that you're so passionate about that you're afraid to fail every time, like, oh no, but my whole life I wanted to be an artist and now I have to do it really well. Otherwise, you know, my whole dream goes away. It's way easier to make all those mistakes and shift your mindset with a business that you don't really care about. And when I look at my own journey and starting those uh, meeting venues, That wasn't a business I'm really passionate about. It wasn't mm. that I felt that I was put on earth to, you know, rent out meeting venues, but it taught me all the skills that made my second business, my, my course business, hugely successful and that I couldn't all of a sudden make a million in a year. So mm. I could have never done that without that first business. And even now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna teach classes online for the rest of my life or if mm. it's my biggest passion i might change my mind and in two years i want to do something else but i will gain all the experience that i gained in this business i will bring to my next business and i think that's a way healthier and way smarter th way of thinking if you want to start a business than that you're too stuck on finding that golden idea